Welcome to Follow Your Joy podcast, where intuition is the doorway to your elevated creativity, more joy, and prosperity. I'm your host, Marla Diane, and I've been living an intuitive life for decades as a creative. That translates to transforming creative entrepreneurs' lives for over 27 years through two businesses as a business strategist and a life designer. And prior to that, an entertainment publicist and talent manager. Follow Your Joy is an entrepreneurial resource for creatives sharing their challenge to victory stories through the lens of listening to their intuition. It's time to make joy your inner GPS for life and business decisions rather than lean on your logic and reason first. You'll not only be following what is most authentic for you, but you will live the beautiful life meant just for you. Want to learn how to access, trust, or up-level your intuition? Join me in the conversation to find out how. Happy holidays! How are you? And how are you feeling about this year coming to an end? There's been a lot of change. And to sum up (laughs) what I've experienced along the way during the year, and with many that I've talked to also, or coached, or sat with over coffee and talked about, read online, heard on podcasts, and intuitively felt was this, this ongoing redirection, meaning just when you thought you re-engineered the way you ran your business, right, or your life, or adjusted marketing strategies, you found you needed to rework it even more, or you're excited one day and then you have feelings of uncertainty and confusion the next. How about Questioning finding your place in the world, where do you belong, and doing your best to accept and embrace change while the world keeps getting more and more unsettling? Yeah, these are the questions and the discussions I've been having with many people all year you know, long. And all the while, I know this is what I've been doing, is usually using your best spiritual practices and daily rituals right, to keep yourself calm and focused and productive, less anxious, less worried, you know, striving for more creativity, more joy, more inner peace, and a higher level of inner guidance, really to do what feels right for the right reasons rather than spin out by listening to outside sources and opinions and all that noise. Does any of this sound familiar to you? It was a very, very common conversation most of the year. And I'll be honest with you, I was not ready for this at the beginning of the year. I thought, hey, you know, I'm going into my 15th year of, of running my coaching business and Thank you, God. Things have been well and kind of in a, you know, momentum and so forth. And that was just not the case that I found by March. Yeah, it was by March is when I went, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, looks like I'm going to need to do some recalibrating here. So all that to say is the, the intuitive answer, right, to this what I call this wonkiness, <laughs> is the big shift that's been happening since 2020. You know, look, life will never be the same. And now three years into that global um, energetic shift, I have found we must quiet ourselves enough and more often to listen for answers to our needs right, and our progress. Allow the logic and the ego mind to do its thing when you need to implement that inner guidance to begin taking action, but not a minute sooner. (laughs) Our inner guidance system, called our inner GPS, is our sixth sense 
that we were born with, but most of us were not taught how to use it, right? Society and what I call the collective consciousness have not been evolved enough right, to live by the sixth sense. But I do believe we're on the way with all the excellent teachers today insisting we learn what comes natural to us and for us. Our sixth sense really needs to be our first sense, don't you think? Our intuition is what will make the huge difference between navigating our best outcome in anything, small or large, versus feeling lost, uncertain, and worried. Okay, that's when we're in our head, we're not in our intuition, okay? Because our intuition protects us from danger and it guides us towards a stronger confidence and opportunities that are meant for us, right? And it's highly reliable. Have you experienced that? I've had those times when I didn't listen and I was detoured from my path only to show me I should have listened to the inner nudge to take that action. When I learned, I, I'm sorry, when I leaned, yeah, when I leaned on my intuition more times than not, I created a fulfilling result, right? So for example, each time I was ready for my next chapter in life over the last four decades, and I've had four reinventions, it might have even been five, but definitely four, it came from an inner feeling and it wasn't logic, but it started out with a feeling of discontent and that directed me to be in discovery mode and ask what's next. It did direct me to be more creative, be more in my imagination and stay out of my logic and demand some sort of answer, right? But instead be in possibility mode. See the difference? Because my intuition is often, it's like a soft, but a powerful feeling, a vibe kind of that's in my body that literally guides me to take an action that I would not have come up with on my own. So by using this guidance system that is always meant to evolve you, not harm you, you'll come to trust it even when it does not make sense. Because you know what? It's not supposed to. Our, you know, beautiful mind always wants an answer. It wants to make sense of it. It wants to know, you know, what's going to happen. Yeah, not with intuition, right? So when you do this, as in listen to the inner guidance, when you do this, you'll find that fear, depression, judgment, critical thinking, right? Give away and give way, I should say, to confidence and creativity and peace of mind and a palpable flow in your life, meaning synchronicities show up more often. But here's the thing, you gotta get disciplined like anything else. You gotta retrain the way you think about intuition and build that muscle because it's not gonna happen overnight in a week or even a month. To be truly connected to your intuition, you must what? Exercise it daily, right? So here's a few practices that I encourage you to put into place, okay? One is understand that we have two types of intuition, the gut and the heart. It's not just one. The difference is the gut feeling, when we feel it in our gut, it's the caution vibe. It's the slow down message. It's the be careful or not now, right? Feeling. 
That's the direction is literally tune into the vibe, to the feeling. And when it feels in your gut, I know you know what I'm talking about. When it's like, yeah, not so sure about that. And it's, it's, this is not logic. It's in the gut. Okay. All right. Whereas your heart intuition, right? where you feel it strongly in that heart space, that's the green light. Go for it, trust this, leap. Do it even if it doesn't make sense, but you'll feel excited with definitely a bit of uncertainty because that's your logic mind going, yeah, but, right? Because again, it may not make sense, but that's the reason for following the feeling, right? So don't try to make sense of it. Just trust your feeling, trust your vibe in your heart. That's the expansive one that's like, yeah, go do it. How exciting, right? Okay. So the second uh, practice or the second knowledge to have is know the difference between mind chatter and intuition. And I know this kind of trips everyone up, including myself. And the more that I you know, uh, work on my intuition and I follow my mentor and I listen to her courses and um, read her books, the better I get at distinguishing between the mind chatter and the intuition. So your mind chatter will keep you in logic, reasoning, analyzing, maybe stressed, feeling in contraction mode, not expansive mode. Yeah. Whereas your intuition will never feel that way. It's always for your highest good. It may not be clear at first, but when you follow it, you'll see the outcome and you'll know why you were meant to do that. And then number three is I recommend that you make a habit of jotting down intuitive feelings, right? When you listened to those feelings. So whether you have a journal or you have just a, I don't know, a little notebook and you just kind of write down, um, you know, on the go, you know, what came up is keep track of these hunches. Okay. The more you do that and you get it out of your head, the better you're going to get at listening to it, noticing it. And of course, then you have a, a, the proof because it's written down. Okay. So here's an example of my own life recently right, about allowing my intuition to guide me. So since 2018, after my month-long stay in Florence, um, Italy, which was in the summer of, of 2017, I had desired to create a retreat in Tuscany for women to experience the same amazing transformation that I did while I was in that beautiful country. I knew when the time would be right to begin the planning of the retreat. And I knew that the details and the opportunity would present itself. So sure enough, five years later, this past summer, I was sitting at dinner right, in a fun Italian restaurant here in Los Angeles with my good friend Rico. And we were sharing stories about our travels to Italy and talking about his global online culinary and travel marketplace. It's really cool. Um, he mentioned he had recently visited this fabulous villa in Tuscany, and he became good friends with the owner and the chef during his visit. And I sat back and went, uh huh. And I asked, started to ask more questions. And by the way, a few months prior to this conversation, I was already considering it might be time for that retreat, but I didn't have a villa. And it almost felt like a big hurdle for me, but I held on to my dream and I trusted that the guidance would be there. Right? So, as Rico was explaining, sitting across the table from me, the lovely owner, Patrizia, and her outgoing fun chef, who cooks all the traditional dinners for the guests and offers cooking classes, I felt that inner nudge, that intuitive vibe said, 
it was just like this, this little nudge, this hunch it says, ask him if he'd be interested in co-hosting the retreat at this villa since he knew the owner, the property. And I trusted Rico, given I've known him for, my gosh, over 37 years. Plus, we share the love of travel and Italy. And he has extensive experience in Italy with the language and the people and the food. That was the beginning of what became Sonia Toscano Creative Renewal Retreat at Villa Ventricina. That's scheduled for May 18th through the 23rd, 2024. I waited for the right time, the right inner guidance to see the dream come alive. Six days and five nights of pure adventure and fun, delight, culture, Italian living, and exploring your own next chapter and how to use your intuition to guide you there. That's what I have planned. So Sonia Toscano Retreat, yay, <laughs> isn't just a week in one of the most celebrated, beautiful places in the world, although that's a huge plus. It's a place I chose to guide six women to change the trajectory of their lives through what I call creative renewal and taking the leap to an adventure of a lifetime. The experience is designed to help you and your travel companions reconnect to revitalize and renew your creative heart while in the breathtaking countryside of Tuscany, Italy. Can you imagine? Oh, and maybe you've been there before and awesome, but imagine this type of scenario. So this retreat, it's built upon the foundation of transformation where I'll be guiding my women how to listen to their intuition even more, right? Their vibes that are meant to help them navigate their next chapter or their next decision in life. Right. One of the core exercises, in fact, during um, our few coaching uh, group sessions at the villa will be to write your next chapter story. So right, it'll be a writing right, exercise, but you're going to be coached on how to do that from your intuition, your imagination, right? That space and what's next that's meant for you. I am like so excited about that. I love that. And me being a, you know, my art, my artistry is writing. I've been doing that my whole life. So I love that part of it. And there's going to be lots, lots more transformational exercises and discussions during our time, but that's going to be one of the core ones. So I want you to think about this is when you're in a foreign culture surrounded by beauty, obviously nature, a different language, different customs, food and wine and art and all that, your imagination and your heart open more to feel and see what's possible that you could not see or feel when in your routine life and familiar surroundings. That is transformational travel and boy, did I live it. I not only spent the last 20 years using and refining my intuition, I also spent the last six years traveling to Italy in search of my true self. And then each time I went, whether it was a month long stay or two weeks, I came home a changed woman. I came home with more courage, more confidence, more heart more refined creativity, more understanding of my purpose on this planet and a deeper intuition because I learned to what? Trust my heart. And I want that for you. Or if you know someone who this is perfect for, share it with them, right? Maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's for your cousin, your neighbor, your friend, your mother, your sister, right? Colleague. There's something about being out of your routine and in a romantic foreign country 
that will change you. Yeah. You know, I want to witness the, the look in your eyes when the stress, the demands of life and the angst melt away, because maybe for the first time in a long time, you felt who you really are. It's exactly what happened to me in Florence. So the full itinerary, right? Uh, details and investment and an option to use my Calendly link to schedule a call to, to really explore your reason for attending and ask questions about the retreat. It's in the show notes, right? So get yourself scheduled for that or if you want, enroll in the retreat, right? Bring a friend. Wouldn't that be amazing, right? travel with a friend. So there's room for six women. There's six spots. Either way, the link again is in the show notes. And the current rate right now on the page, on the information and registration page, that is the early rate that's good till December 28th. Okay. I launched the uh, registration around Thanksgiving. So it's been out for a little while. So I'm going to end this with giving you my three intentions for 2024 that may land well with you for your own life. So here goes. Watch for signs. That's number one. Watch for signs. Be conscious of what messages are in front of you. Number two, listen to your intuition before taking action. And follow your joy. And number three, do what comes easy. Yes, have a good work ethic and work diligently. But for God's sake, stop the struggle and the grind. And allow what you love doing to come easy. Life is not meant to be hard. It's a big mindset shift. Do what comes easy. Boy, that feels good, doesn't it? All right. So with all that, I wish you a beautiful, safe, cozy, loving holiday. I thank you for being with me all year on the podcast. And I, of course, look forward to giving you more inspiring entrepreneurial guests with their struggle to success stories from the lens of their intuition in 2024. God bless, and I'll see you in January. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening. You can find more entrepreneurial stories and resources at MarlaDiane.com. And while you're there, enjoy my free downloads to up-level your business and your life. And Instagram, it's my favorite place to hang out. Let's connect there. If you received inspiration from the episode, I'd sure appreciate a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. Until next episode, take care.